My love of sport starts at a very young age. I was four years old when I watched my first Olympics with my mom and sister. Seeing the athletes stand on that podium and be so proud to represent the Maple Leaf just made me want to be exactly like them. And I've been so competitive ever since, just trying to be up there with these idols. So I started diving when I was nine years old and kind of hopped on the international scene very early. At 11, I was already representing Canada and I was go, go, go representing, you know, throughout my whole junior career. And it took me all over the world. And I actually started high diving because of social media. I put on my Instagram story, should I do Red Bull cliff diving after diving when I graduate? And 99% of people said yes. 1% was my mom. She said, absolutely not. Please don't do it. And I think that that's what made me the best athlete I could be was getting out of that comfort zone. I am now a Red Bull Cliff Diver and Team Canada High Diver. So I travel the world and compete amazing high dives off the 20 meter platform. Sometimes we range all the way up to 23 meters. And I used to look at this and think, absolutely not, will I jump off there ever? And I remember looking at my coach growing up and they were like, yeah, High divers, they're crazy. Like, let's really focus in on our diving. And when my career in diving was coming to a close, I was like, I'm missing something. I'm missing this adrenaline and this fear and this excitement. And that's exactly what high diving brings. I am so passionate about diving because it's one of those sports that mixes very many elements together. And there's power, there's strength, there's beauty, there's grace, there's very few people in the world that can say that they jump off 20 meter platform for a living and I'm honored to be one of them and to stand up there and represent the Maple Leaf and to mix beauty and grace and talent and strength all into one sport. When I got the call for a Red Bull cliff diving event in Paris, I was starstruck. I was like, we get to dive into La Seine right in front of the Eiffel Tower. I remember the first dive I did walking to the edge of that platform and seeing the Eiffel Tower. I had to like pinch myself and really focus and do the dive right in front of me because it was just a dream. Bravery is beautiful. This was my initial, you know, slogan coming into this sport because I started content creating and showing the behind the scenes of what high diving really is. During COVID, everyone was sitting at home you know, going through their own challenges and mental health, physical health, just bored at home. And a lot of people wanted to learn more about the access I had to this facility during COVID and the sport that I was learning. Over 3 million people follow me now. And the most common word in my section is bravery. She's so brave. Oh my gosh, I wanna be brave like her one day. And I clicked with this and said, okay, how can I engage with my audience? Because nobody jumps off the 20 meter platform and I want to be able to connect with people's brave stories themselves. And everyone has their own brave journey and it's not just me jumping off 20 meter platform. So I started using the hashtag brave gang and this went viral. Everyone started saying bravery is beautiful. So I struggled a lot growing up with comparing myself to others. And I actually fell into a really dark eating disorder in grade 12. And I didn't have anyone to turn to. I felt so alone. All I wanted to do was be as small as my competitors. I was a 5'8", really tall diver. That's really rare in the sport of diving to be really tall. And I really struggled in seeing the beauty in myself and the power and the grace that I brought to this sport because I was just trying to be someone else. I wanted to get online and to tell people that no matter what your body looks like, you are capable of your dreams and believing in yourself and not trying to be someone else is what's going to help you get as far as you can go. And so sharing my own anxious days, I still struggle with anxiety. I still go through my own challenges every single week standing up there. Are you kidding? I definitely cry at least once a week trying to motivate myself to do this. And it takes a lot of of courage and bravery because when I was trying to be someone else, nothing worked out. I was, my body was breaking, my hair was falling out. Like I was really losing not only my mental health, but my physical health. And I never want anyone to ever experience what I went through. Quitting sports when you're going through puberty. I think this is the most common question in 
you know, my life. I get a lot of people messaging me saying, Molly, I can't do it. My body's changing. I don't love who I am anymore because I'm different. And what the sport that I used to love is a lot harder. And girls face a lot of challenges when their body does start to change. The biggest thing is change is normal. Sport gives us so many benefits. I think me personally, I've learned dedication, commitment, self-love was something I was not expecting to learn through sport. But what I've learned is that the more you love yourself through the failures and the challenges and the, the championships that you don't win makes you an even better athlete. And so learning to love yourself at your lowest is gonna make you the best version of yourself at the highest. So that's definitely something I've learned from sport is that don't give up when you fail. Like failure is so much a part of this process. My mom and my sister have been my biggest inspiration since day one. We grew up in a single mom household and it was magical. And I think having these women in my life just achieve their dreams has inspired me to keep pushing for mine. We actually started on welfare and we were eating craft dinner for the first four years of my life at these shelters and we didn't have the funding to to get through a lot of of life and i'm so grateful every single day that i can say i started on craft dinner and now i represent canada <laughs> my favorite candy is definitely sour gummy worms my favorite hobby is definitely content creating. Anytime I'm not diving, I am scrolling TikTok, Instagram, just trying to come up with fun new ideas on how to show this crazy life to my audience and connecting with you all. My go-to movies are actually the Fast and the Furious movies because they're so thrilling and it just reminds me that I can do some thrilling stuff too. My favorite song that hypes me up for every 20 meter dive is Goosebumps by Travis Scott. I love the beat, I love the energy, and it just reminds me that I will have goosebumps, but it's worth it. My favorite thing about Montreal is probably the Old Port. There's a beautiful downtown area on the waterfront with a Ferris wheel, and it just reminds me of a little Europe and a little Paris and the cobblestone walkways are just gorgeous and it's definitely my place to go when I just need a good little rest from all of this craziness.